Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. We are loud and proud from Nakuru region and I am Austin Yambo. And I am Mariam Bashar. Today on the show, we're dealing with the sensitive topic of parenting. Is poor parenting to blame for the indiscipline in schools? We have Bahati girls going versus Veru school. We can't wait to see what the debaters have in store for us. <laughs> Proposal number one, you have three minutes. Parents are the readers of the homes. This is you find that parents are not taking the responsibilities of children. They take the children in school, and then when they come back at home, they find no one at home. As in the children find no one at home, and then they, the children try to do something at home, but when, because the parents are not at home, they are not there to find on their way. And then take, for example, that a parent pampers her child, either a boy or a girl, the boy when the pa the parents like the boy to when in future to have a good life but this leads to when pampering the child the girl or the boy doesn't find the way out reason being the parents are they are not on their sides but they are there doing their work they are not concentrating on their children and these children emulate whatever the parents teach them at home or what they see at home and take them the, the things to the schools and then you find that they are always on punishment. This is, the teachers take this as an indisciplined case. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes for your opening remarks. First and foremost, let us understand the motion. What is poor parenting? Poor parenting is the inability to support and promote the emotional, physical, social, and intellectual development of a child from infancy to adulthood. And what is indiscipline? Indiscipline is the lack of control of behavior of a particular people. The motion is basically telling us that the inadequate care given to the children in our schools is responsible for the indisciplines in my school and in your school. Why are we focusing on only poor parenting and yet we have other factors? Why should you focus on the tip of the iceberg and not the other factors? Allow me to introduce you to the iceberg and not just the tip of the iceberg. There were three monkeys on a tree. The first monkey got sick, died and fell off on, a, on the tree. The second monkey also got sick. It died and also fell off the tree. The third monkey fell off the tree. It did not get sick. And it did not get fall off the tree because it was sick. It just decided all the others are falling, so I am going to also fall. And it died also. This is the problem our schools are facing. Peer pressure. The third monkey was just following what the others were doing. It was tired of staying alone, so it had to follow what the others had done. So it also fell off. This is exactly the problem that is eating us. We take children to our schools. They go to schools. They meet other, other friends. And maybe we, have, maybe we have a group in a school. And a, a student or a people gets there and wants to fit in the group. Yeah? I want to be in this group where I can put on good hairstyles. I get a form one in the queue. I just push the form one out. That is a form of indiscipline. This, there are these groups where they want to fit in, they can talk back at teachers. Talking back at a teacher is a form of indiscipline. Did the parents contribute to that? It is the child who made the choice. The child wanted to be in a group. In addition to this, when a parent raises a child, it should raise, he or she raises the child knowing it will reach a point where the child has to make a decision. A child has to make a choice. The choice lay, lay in our hands. It's your decision to choose. You want good or you want bad? You want this or you don't want this? 
The decision lay in your hands. Do I really want to get into this group? No. So, let us sit there and know focusing on poor parenting is equivalent to being penny wise and pound foolish. Thank you. Second proposer, you have three minutes. John Kihara from Wero School. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here with the strongest conviction that our parents indeed are to blame for the indisciplines cases we are having in our schools. I want us to look at it in this angle that when a child is born, he or she is born with a mind that is ready to absorb what is in his or her surrounding. And I don't know how, how you can determine the fruits of a tree if you don't know the seed you are planting. I mean, why can we say that the, the people, the kid, the kid meets at school and stuff, are the ones who influence his or her behaviors, while parents are the people who the kid meets first? I mean, I don't see the reason as to why you should blame a goat for stealing your milk when you have a cat around. Now, let us look at this. Domestic violence has become a, 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 has become a daily issue. I mean, our parents are fighting each and every day because of domestic issues like misuse of funds, alcoholism in our fathers and, and sorry to say our mothers. Our kids learn this from their parents. When they go to school, they start in, involving in drug because my father does that, because my mother does that. My mom wakes up in the morning, starts hurling abuses at my father. When the kid goes to school, even my mom does this. Now you see the parents are, are a part of, or they contribute to what the parent does, at, uh, to what the kid does at school. We all make mistakes, yes. But our parents pamper our ass, as in they hide their uh, mistakes by maybe giving us a lot of money, allowing us to use these phones, allowing us to watch films. And these films, some of them carry a lot, a lot of falsehood. They just bring some kind of uh, alteration in the normal functioning of the kid's mind. And when the kid goes to school, what happens? She, or he or she starts telling the other kids, I mean, I watched this in the movie, I can do this to you. This guy fought like this, I can do the same. And then it ends up being an indisciplined case. My other point is that I want to look at indiscipline in the angle of drug and alcoholism. Our kids, it is said that, or uh, 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 statistics done by Asante Africa organization show that 45% of teenagers in our schools are involved in alcoholism and drug abuse. And out of this 45%, 70% of them got this from their parents. It's alarming. I mean, it's, 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 it brings a lot of questions. Are we bringing up our kids the way we should be? I mean, there's something that has gone wrong somewhere. And it's all begun from the roots, from, the, from our parents. Now, I, I think we should really be asking these questions to our parents. And I don't see the reason as to why my fellow, my fellow opposers here want to bring us issues of peers and peer influence and freedom at schools, or we have the roots down there that are contaminated and, and affect the growing of the tree. Thank you. Opposition will now hear your rebuttal. You also have three minutes. I am indebted to my father for living, but I am indebted to my teacher for living well. A quote by Alexander the Great, and I, Brenda Nyabinge from the Bahati Girls, I'm here to tell you why this statement is very right. First, I rebuttal from what, for what my opponents have said. My opponents have said that our parents pamper us. Well, they've not told us what our, pump, our parents are pampering us with. I like the way they use pamper. Well, to pamper is to provide for someone such that that person does not need to exert him or herself looking for the thing that you're providing. What if I am pampering my child with morals? When you tell me poor parenting is a factor, I agree, because we have said poor parenting is the tip of the iceberg. The tip of the iceberg is also part of the iceberg. No one has said poor parenting is not a factor. So whatever you're saying, you're agreeing with us. And then, when you tell us our parents give us phones and iPods, to distract us when we've done bad behavior or anything wrong. Are you telling us that our parents are so unreasonable that they will give us a reward for a wrong done? 
When you do wrong, are you given an iPod? Let me address the big cheese in this, the big cheese in this matter. The big reasons as to why we have indiscipline in schools. And my, I'm addressing the teachers. We have teachers whom we see daily when we're in school, when we're learning. We spend three months with the teachers, one month with, the, with their parents, when we're in boarding schools. And then when we're in day schools, we'll spend eight hours during the day with the teacher, two hours in the evening with your parent before you retire to bed. Now these teachers are the ones in the best place to be our role models because we spend most of our time with them. What happens when your teacher is not the right role model for you? What happens? Like, when you're told not to listen to readings per se, what happens if your teacher actually has a reading as a ringtone of the phone? I was told not to listen to readings, and when my teacher is punishing me, his phone rings, a reading. I'll be wondering, what the, what's happening? And then, when teachers practice favoritism, the students whom they favor will think that that is an opportunity for them, that they can do anything without consequences. And to the students who are not favored, they will see it as an opportunity to rebel because the teacher is not favoring, is favoring one side. They'll see it as unfairness. And this is um, according to a study done by Mohamed Ghazmi, and it was published on the 25th of August, 2013. And then we have influence from the school administration. Wow. When the government tells you, do not extend in school, and your own administration is telling you, come with home clothes, and then when you get to school, you'll change so that you'll not be noticed. And they teaching you how to rebel against the government. Now, if they've te taught you how to rebel against the government, when you rebel against the school administration, are they going to complain? There are other factors which bring about indiscipline. Poor parenting is a very small fraction, and blaming it is quite wrong, I believe. Mechoka, kuibi wa pesa zangu. Mechoka, kupoteza mda wangu. Pesa utanibia, meinda stima. Waiza tumapesa ta ukiwa wima. Wema sawu ihara katena na mapema. Una lena saf basi kumuwa M-Pesa. Salute to M-Pesa. Thank you to Safari. The better option. Take part in the M-Challenge by sending your short song, rap, or poem about Safaricom M-Pesa on WhatsApp. And you could win 1,000 shillings in Safaricom airtime. The audience has posed questions to the two teams on stage. They will be responding shortly. The proposition have been asked, why are we blaming indiscipline on parents, yet they're often away trying to provide for their children? And the opposition have been asked, are teachers really good role models, yet they're also parents, and they may also be causing indiscipline in their children? <laughs> Proposal number three, you have three minutes. I'm Martin Moredi from Wero School. I remember here I said that parents are pampering kids with uh, smartphones, money, ETC. Well, they do pamper them with those uh, issues. We find that they give them smartphones, they give them phones, they give them tablets, they give them laptops, they even give them films to watch. But do they supervise them on the films that they are watching? Do they go through their phones to see what they are watching, what they have downloaded, what they want to watch? We have to blame their parents because their parents are not supervising what we are, we are watching. The parents just give us the gadgets and they don't look at what we are, we are going to watch on the gadgets, what, what we are downloading on the gadgets. So we have to blame our parents because they are the cause of indiscipline. Okay, we say that uh, the parents are to blame, the, they are to blame because of indiscipline. We find that parents are responsible for us. Parents have their duty to advise us on issues. Parents have their duty to guide uh, their children. But when they neglect those duties, you find that their children, of course, will be indisciplined. They'll see that there's no one to advise them on such issues. They find that uh, what they are doing is already correct. So they have no other choice but to go on with what they are doing. Thus, cases of indiscipline crop up in school. Okay, I would like to also say that poor parenting involves disciplining their children. You find that 
modern parents, they say that once uh, you, you go out there, you have come out of uh, their, their handling, you find that the, the parent neglects the, the children. So the child sees that everything he does is correct. So uh, you see that the parent has neglected his or her own duty. So the, the, the children, the students, they have to go in, in discipline cases. We find that uh, parents who do not care about their children are also causes of indiscipline. We find that a parent may be too occupied in his or her own uh, occupation. Their jobs, they are occupied in more than getting money than helping their children get good moral values. You see that the, ch the children now will see that the parent does not care about anything else. They just care about themselves. So anything that, uh, that the, children, the child does, it will be correct according to her, his or her own understanding. So you find that the, the child will end up in, in discipline. Okay, let's go on to the teachers. Our fellow opposer here has said that teachers will contribute to the indiscipline cases. But even teachers are also parents. So they'll, they'll see that, you see that the, the, the teachers do not, do not take part in guiding the, the students. Thus, there will be uh, cases of indiscipline. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond to the audience. Poor parenting, being blamed for indiscipline in schools. My worthy opponent just told us he does not see the reason as why we are, blame, we are not blaming the parents solely. Well, I'm here to show you the reason. Beatrice Kimunya from the Bahati Girls vehemently opposing this mission with credible evidence. And first and foremost, I want to revert to your question. One person asked, about the teachers and they also parents. Remember, in this motion, we are not, we are not saying that parents are not to blame. We are saying they are to blame, but we also have other factors. So when it's, the teacher is also a parent at home, it means that he's going to influence the child negatively. And when he also comes to school, he's also going to influence the student negatively. On to my first point, the Constitution. We all know about the children's rights in the Constitution, in the Children's Act. First of all, it states that a child shall not be subjected to corporal punishment. By the same token, the child shall not be detained except as a measure of last resort. Think about that, as a measure of last resort. You may think about juvenile. But I'm saying that option is far down their list. And what are students doing? What are parents doing? They're taking advantage of this right of children. By tell, you find a student in class, the teacher wants to discipline that student. But the student with so much effrontery, so much audacity, stands and tells the teacher, if you punish me or if you dare touch me, I'll sue you. On to my second point. The regimentation of our school system. Can you think about this? The rules that are being enforced in our schools. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And we must not remain complacent to the fact that some of the rules that are there in school for students to go against their morals. For example, like my counterpart said, the tuition section. You find that after three months of being in school, you're still being kept in school for an extra two weeks. So that maybe that factor might trigger the students to revolt. Remember, enforced legislation might actually lead to revolt. To my third point, the counseling sector in our school, it is true. They have been neglected. For instance, they do not have facilities such as the offices to conduct those guidance and counseling sessions. The facilities such as computers, that is what is lacking in our schools. And I'm here to say that blaming, putting the blame on the parents solely, simply transfers the responsibility from the person who makes that choice. Let us say this, parents teach to teach their children discipline teachers to train them to be disciplined and the individual to learn how to be disciplined. Thank you. 
will now hear closing remarks. Proposers, you have one minute. Thank you. Martin Moredi again. So I would like to uh, close the motion by saying that parents are not only those who bore us, but also those who take part in our upbringing. So uh, whether those who bore us, those who take part in our upbringing, that is the teachers, the society out there, we all have to blame in the indiscipline cases because they have to turn a blind eye where a person sees indiscipline. So uh, we support the motion saying that parents are to blame for the indiscipline cases in schools. Thank you. Opposition, one minute for your closing statement as well. A parent gives life, but as a parent gives no more. In the same token, a murderer takes life, but his deed stops there. A teacher's influence has no end. Its, end, its ends are in eternity. His influence does not stop. This is said by Henry Adams, showing us truly that parents make up a small percentage and the teachers make even a bigger. And that's just one factor. It's true that the final forming of a person's character lies in that person's hands. The parent's duty is only to guide, but not to make the choice for the individual. God thinks about you, not for you. In the same way, the parent cannot think for you, the parent will think about you. So when you make a bad choice, it's your own choice. The parent taught you, you now have to make the right choice. And blaming par parenting for the decisions students make in school is not only unfair, it is wrong. Thank you. Eunice, you know, when you start off as the first speaker, you set the pace for the rest. Um, so you, we didn't hear the definition of terms in, your, in the motion when you started off. John, I think you picked up the team when you came across as the, as the cross-examiner. And I love the fact that I thought you had forgotten to cross-examine, but you did that at last, you know, when you're towards the end of your submissions. Great points and very confident. Martin, good points as well. I think you, you have a good command and voice, you know, when you stand to the stage and you speak. We, we get to, you, you know, you get our attention. Um, all I think you need to work on is really organizing yourself so that now you can work on your presentation. So there's no, it's a seamless flow of what you want to bring across. Because you had very great points. Uh, in fact, you're the person who brought the issue about the internet and the phones and what parents should be really checking on what the kids are doing. And that was, that was well done. Bahati girls, Diana, a strong voice and a strong start. You did very well in the definition of terms. You're very passionate with a lot of uh, conviction and a very coherent argument. More ideas should have come out. I didn't feel like you uh, exhausted all the ideas. Brenda, once again, a very good voice. Your point on pampa and when a parent pampers a child, that was awesome. Beatrice, also strong voice. I think all three girls, you really have strong voices. Make good use of that. Uh, very good mastery of language, and I liked the point on the Constitution. I really wondered when you'd get to it. Well done. Where to school? I think you could have broadened your perspective and looked at the motion in its entirety, even the question of violence, bullying in schools. You know, those, these are not just isolated cases. They are rampant in our country. And you could have identified them and say, these cases of indiscipline are as a result of poor parenting. To the girls, Bahati girls, again, interesting team. One thing that I can mention about you is teamwork. I think the passion that I see in Diana is the same passion that I see in Brenda. In fact, even more and the passion that I see in Beatrice. Teamwork is very important if you want to win a debate. To the two teams, it was a fair debate. You know, if you're given a motion, try to get local examples. Local examples speak well to us. We watch news every time. We read news all the time. And we know examples of things that affect us. Above all, we are students. I mean, what exactly do you consider in discipline? in your schools. Bring it home and make it more engaging. It was a commendable task, but I believe there is always room for improvement. Where is school? The judges gave you 60.2%. Let's give them a hand. And Bahati girls, you are our winners for today with 71.2%. We'd like to congratulate both teams for a very outstanding effort and we'd like to send our gratitude to Safari Mempesa and KBC Channel One, urging our members of the audience and our viewers back home 
to follow us on Twitter at GreatDebatersEA. This is Austin Nyumbok. And I am Mariam Bishar. We'll see you next time. Contest was brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa.